Hey y'all, thanks for joining me today. This video is upon request. Someone asked about my skincare routine. Anytime someone asks me about my skin, I'm both shocked and surprised and also hugely flattered. I don't feel like I have the greatest skin. I, you know, I've talked about the fact that I have texture on my skin and I do self tan so that the color also masks some of the inconsistencies on my skin. And I, you know, I have, you know, wrinkles and all of that, just like everyone else. And if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Veronica and I am 48. I just turned 48 this year and my skin, I would say is combo. I have an oily T-zone through the middle. And then I would say around the perimeter is fairly normal. I really don't have periods of the year where I have dry skin. So just know that in terms of product recommendations in this video, also, I'm not a skincare expert by any means. I don't have any background in dermatology and I get very, very confused with skincare products and ingredients. So I can't, you know, proclaim that I know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to share with you what I do to keep my skin at its best based on what I know. Now, if you watch dermatologists on YouTube, they're a little bit all over the place. One of my favorites is Dr. Dre, and she's always talking about you don't need to spend a lot for good skincare. So I keep that in mind, although I do, I at least recently have been doing a little bit more splurging on certain products that I know have really rave reviews and that people claim make a huge difference for them. Of course, you have to be careful with reviews online because people get really excited about products. And I also think there's this whole psychology behind products products being packaged a certain way or being sold at higher prices that convinces people that the products are better than maybe an inexpensive counterpart. I mean, I think deep down we all know that that is not true, but marketing certain, certainly plays a big part in how influencers talk about products as well. There are companies that send out products in PR, right? Public relations, which is a way for them to market their products at traditionally lower costs than they would if they had to advertise on print, on TV, you know, any other kind of mass media, if they had to push out the ads themselves, the cost would be exponentially higher than if they put out PR to a bunch of influencers and then let those people push the products out to their networks. And sometimes you'll see both. Sometimes, for example, if you're a big YouTube watcher, you'll see ads for something showing up on your YouTube or on your Instagram or your Facebook, TikTok, whatever your social media is, and you'll see influencers talking about it. Eventually, all of that stuff creeps into your brain. We all experience FOMO in some form or fashion and then get curious and try products and, and all of that. So I can only share with you the products that I've been using lately. And by lately, I would say fairly consistently over the past few months, maybe three-ish months, Months or so. I'll also share which products have sort of been staples for me all along. And what I think some of my challenge, you know, problems are for my own particular skin. And we'll go from there. Would love to hear your thoughts. Would love to hear about your favorite products in the comments. If you leave a comment down below about a product, please share your age if you're willing to or age group, you know, like the decade of life that you're in and the skin type that you have. I think that's helpful for, for people to see. Is this person sort of like me so that they can gauge whether it's a product that they think might address some of the issues that they're looking at? So... You know my age, you know my skin type. I can also share that I think relative to my population, my age, I've probably spent a lot of time out in the sun. I was in a marching band in my younger years. I was also in a drum corps and we traveled nationally and were always out on fields in sunlight. Sometimes we wore sunblock, oftentimes I did it. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that I will get red, you know, after a day in the sun and then it'll slowly become a nice tan over a few days. So that's my thing. I don't burn right away and I certainly don't tan super easily. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. So that will tell you a little bit about my skin, but I do have what I think is some decent sun damage. I sense that I will probably get more sunspots like this and so forth. Actually, that's not called a sunspot, it's called an age spot. But you know, these kinds of spots that are both genetic and I believe also accelerated by sunlight and that kind of thing. And I would say that I started taking care of my skin maybe in college and after. Before that, I really didn't care. I would wear a little bit of makeup here and there, some eyeliner, some mascara, some lip gloss, some blush, that kind of thing. But in terms of really thinking about skincare, it started in late college into my 20s. And I started to make sure that I was washing my face more often, which quite frankly is not something I really thought about in my youth. I'd go to sleep with a dirty face all the time and, and not think twice about it. 
just being honest. So somewhere in that 20s decade, I started to get better about taking makeup off at night, for example. I was never one to wear a super like full foundation. I was like a bare minerals powder foundation kind of girl with some Mary Kay eyeshadow and lipstick and 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 that. Not like a full beat like you see today. Not like with the bronzer and the everything. No, no. Foundation plus powder. And, no, that wasn't happening until probably my late 30s when I got really crazy about makeup, especially when makeup became big on YouTube. I'm bringing that up to say that I have not been consistent about skincare my whole life. So really, I would say I got super serious about it in my mid to late 30s, where I was like religious about washing my makeup off at night, washing in the morning, and making sure I was using an adequate moisturizer and always, 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 always using a sunblock when I went out. And I've gotten even more sort of dogmatic and religious about it, if you will, as I've gotten older. So that's a huge intro. Let's get into the products finally, right? By the way, I don't have any makeup on right now. And I don't have like the best, brightest lighting because I have changed the mirror that has lighting. I'll show you the new mirror, which is super cool in a little bit. But I just want to share with you like what my skin looks like. I have really large pores here. I do get, I guess, like everybody else does. I don't, I don't know that you'd call them black because there's a name for that, but when your nose gets oily and I don't really get acne. I mean, I may occasionally have like a little itty bitty zit pop up here and there, but it's very rare. My skin stays pretty steady in terms of that kind of thing. I do have some wrinkles around my eyes. You know, my under eyes do get uh, wrinkled and so forth. Very thin skin under here. You know, there you go. That's That happens as you get older. Watch that. It just takes longer to kind of pop into place. So, I was going to say, remind me to talk about, but you can't remind me, so I have to remind myself to talk about the role of protein in all of this and fat. So, we'll get to that. Gosh, that was super long. Are you still with me? Woo. So, why don't we start with the morning? In the morning, I use a gentle cleanser on my face. So, I have used the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser now. This one is for uh, normal and oily skin, and it has ceramide, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid in it. I'm kind of of the mindset when it comes to cleanser in particular, which is something that you put on your face literally for seconds, like I might wash my face for 20 to 30 seconds or something. I really personally don't want to spend a whole ton of money on something I'm just going to wash down the drain. Everybody sort of has a different philosophy about that. And so one of the big messages of this video is you need to try different product products and figure out what works for you, your routine, and your skin type. Everybody is so different one skin type to the next. So anyway, I've been using this for forever, and it's one that I've just, you know, I just repurchase and repurchase and repurchase. So after that, I like a gentle exfoliation. I've used different exfoliators. One that I have come back to, it's from Amore Pacific, and it's the Treatment Enzyme Peel Cleansing Powder. And this is a really fine powder, you know, like that, that you, I probably put like a dime size worth and then sort of emulsify it, I think is the word, with a little bit of water. I don't put a whole ton of water, some drops, enough to make just a really like medium thick paste. And then I will put that all over my face, especially in areas like this where a lot of dead skin tends to accumulate. I do go under my eyes with it, which is something that if you have sensitive skin, you may not want to do. I think this is a super gentle exfoliator and it's enzymatic in nature. So it uses enzymes to break down the dead skin and wash it away. But I tend to have skin builds up here and usually right up in here and sometimes over my eyebrows too. So I'll pay special attention to those areas. And it, I find that together, these two give me a nice surface, leave me with a nice skin surface for whatever my next steps are for the day. On occasion, if I feel like I need an extra bit of help making sure that my face is really clean in the morning, or if I want like a flawless makeup application later, and I know it's going to be a long day where I want to be sure to exfoliate well, I will use either this, which is, I think this is called the, yep, the For Foreo or Foreo. And this one can be really expensive. So don't pay full price for this if you want something like this. By the way, what it is, is it has these little silicone nodes. They're bigger on the back and stiffer, and they're smaller and softer in the front. And then you I don't know where the microphone on this thing is, but you can hear it kind of buzzing. So it's supposed to help remove the makeup better than just your fingers. I don't know that that's true or not, but I know what this does do is help exfoliate even more. And I also use this on my lip, the soft part here, if I have particularly dry lips. That's one part of my face that does get dry quickly. And I try to stay moisturized <laughs> as I am right now. So this 
Or I also have this Clarisonic Mia. This is the exfoliating tool that's on it. It comes with different kinds of brush heads. And it looks like it's spinning, but it's not. It's literally just vibrating in place, okay? So something like this. There's lots of different tools of this nature. Don't pay full price for any of them. Look, Google online if you're interested. This one I got at TJ Maxx for I think $30, and I purchased this for $50 a long time ago on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, I keep these in the shower and they stay charged. So then when I come out of the shower, of course I let my face dry off a bit. The next thing that I will do is usually go in with an essence. And so an example of that is Tatcha the Essence. I didn't used to believe in essences and I'm not sure that I do now. What I can share with you is the combination of things I am telling you about have made in my mind a visible difference in the tone and texture of my skin. Like my skin I feel looks overall more vibrant and healthy than it has in past years. I'm not saying it's on account of an essence or any particular product. I'm just telling you that this is what I do. <laughs> So I'm making my way through this one. I got this, I feel like I wanna say the end of November. And so it's been a few months and I'm right in here. This is lasting a lot longer than I thought. But anyway, what it is, I'll put a like quarter sized amount in my hand. It's a very watery substance. And so I use my both of the palms of my hands to press it into my skin as is directed. The idea behind an essence is that it is supposed to prep your skin to receive other products. So the theory is that it makes your skin sort of more ready for deep penetration by the products to come. Whether that's scientifically true or not, I am not sure. And dermatologists seem to differ on whether in essence is something of any importance or just a bunch of like marketing hype. Either way, here's what I use. There's lots of different kinds of essences and you can do your own research on them. I'll tell you about another one in just a minute here. So I press this onto my face. This is what I've done now. I mean, even though it's like super late in the <laughs> Afternoon. I showered late and this is technically my morning routine. So then I like to use a serum after that and that's something that I have done for a long time. The essence step is a little newer in my routine because I'm still skeptical about it but I enjoy using it. And serums come, they're all, they're all kinds of serums. You know, you can pay a little bit for a serum from like the ordinary if you want to be on the more sort of economical side. And y'all, you can pay hundreds for serums. It's all over the place. And you do your own research about what you think is worth the money that you're willing to pay. So I'll just leave it at that. I'm not getting into that whole debate about whether expensive is better. You know, I don't necessarily believe that. But right now, I've got lots of different kinds of serums. I'm enjoying the Pharmacy Filling Good Hyaluronic Acid Plumping Serum. For now, when this runs out, I have others that I will use as well. So I do tend to look at a lot of reviews and I do tend to go to dermatologists Dermatology YouTube channels for advice on this. I don't really take influencer advice on this. Like my favorite makeup YouTubers, they are no different than the rest of us, right? They're not dermatologists. They're not doctors. They're not scientists. They don't know. They can only tell you how it applies for them. And we have to trust that they're giving us their honest review on their experience. So anyway, we're all in the same boat in that way. So I rather go to the dermatologist's channels and hear their differing opinions on products. So like their best of, or don't waste your time on this or that, and kind of draw my own conclusions. Anyway, hyaluronic acid is temporarily plumping for the skin. It doesn't, as I understand it, have long-term benefits, but it will in the immediate you know, time that you use it, hour or so after, give your skin a nice plumped glow, like very slight. So I really do like this. Then I will usually go in with the moisturizer and the kind that I use depends on the look that I'm going for for the day. So if I want a look that could be a little bit more matte, I will use a long standing staple. So very quickly, I have used the facial cleanser for forever and a day. I've been using Amore Pacific for the enzymatic exfoliator for forever and a day. And also this Polish Choice, this is the resist line and it's for normal to dry skin. I don't, I use moisturizer that's for sometimes for drier skin because I like the extra moisturization that it gives me even though I have an oily T-zone. That's just me. So this one has an SPF 50 in it and it has certain antioxidants in it. So whether that's effective or not, I don't know. I especially like the texture of this one. So let me show you because I've gone through, I mean, me and Paula's Choice, we're cool. <laughs> I have used tube after tube after tube of this, but it's a fairly lightweight moisturizer, but it does the job. 
you do have to rub it in otherwise you will have some white cast but there you go oops sorry so it has a little bit of a mattifying effect while also moisturizing on the skin if i'm going for a more dewy effect one of my faves is the super goop play everyday lotion with spf 50. this one is a lot juicier this is like juicy make you look like you are greased up sitting on a beach somewhere and i kind of like it so if i want that dewy moisturizer underneath my foundation you see the glow that that gives this is a great one and it stays pretty like tacky and glowy for most of your makeup application period and then it kind of settles down and i just i enjoy it and then i go to my makeup routine which we won't go over here now one thing i will do on certain mornings if I feel like I need it, because I do like a little bit of color on my skin. This is not my natural skin tone. I am ghostly white, like the palest of the pale Casper <laughs> white naturally. So this is pretty golden for me. I do keep on hand my favorite self tanner. This is not skincare, but I just wanted to share. And I'll do this after the essence. Like on a clean face, I'll put the essence on, let that kind of soak in, and then do this, which is the Central Pay Self tan bronzing water face mist i am on bottle umpteen umpteen i've gone through at least a dozen of these in recent years maybe more and i have backups i mean i just i won't be without this it dries pretty quickly it gives a nice even little glow to the skin if that's something that you're after just wanted to add that in okay so put on my makeup most days I wear a pretty full face of makeup. I enjoy putting on makeup. At least one day a week, I will do no makeup. So that's usually the day that I go self-tan. I self-tan once a week if I can, if my schedule allows for it. Not that it takes a long time. I mean, I just have to drive to the place. It takes me 10 minutes to stand in the booth and get spray tan and then 10 minutes to dry off. Like that's the whole process. But on that, those days, I don't want to disrupt the development of the self-tan. So I leave my skin alone. I do not put anything on it. Okay, so on days that I have my full face of makeup on, in the evenings, my routine is fairly simple. I usually start off with an eye makeup remover, and my favorite for a while now has been this Sephora waterproof eye makeup remover. It has a blue portion and then a clear portion, and you mix it up. I mean, I'm down to the end there, so it's kind of mixed up, but I've gone through bottle after bottle after bottle after bottle of this. There are lots of different kinds. Find one that doesn't irritate your eyes is the big thing. I do have kind of sensitive eyes. This one doesn't bother me, but it does bother my sister, for example, and she and I look almost like twins. Like We have almost exact same kind of skin, and it bothers her. So she uses, I think, a Chanel one, um, and it works great for her. Is it Chanel or is it Lancome? I don't remember. But anyway, I use this on a cotton pad, a cotton round. Not cotton, excuse me. Let me show you. Yes, it is like a fabric cotton round. This looks grody because I've used these for years and years. <laughs> I have a whole package of these and they, they look great. I promise I washed them. But I'll pour this on here and gently press it on my eyes and then very slowly and gently make sure that it's taking off the majority of my eye makeup because this is, to me, the most tender area of your face in terms of being careful not to tug at it too much. Following that, I do go in with an oil-based cleansing balm. I think they're mostly oil-based. Right now, I've used lots of different kinds, like a dozen different kinds, and I like a lot of different kinds. Right now, I'm using the Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. This is the original formula by Vanilla. Vanilla. It comes in different colors with different smells and whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The point is it has to be one of these cleansing balms that's thick like that, and it emulsifies in your hand. You know, you, I put like a good quarter size amount in my hand, warm it up to emulsify it and then i am very very careful to make sure it gets on all the nooks and crannies and corners of my face all the way down my neck because i do use like bronzer down my neck and foundation and make sure i'm getting in here in these parts where my mascara is i, I do that part last because sometimes these things can um get just a little goopy and make it hard to see if you try to <laughs> open your eyes so it's the last step the eyes but I do you know go all the way out to the ears wherever I have makeup on I apply sometimes even on my lip if I have a lip stain or something that has seemed to last the whole day so and I let that sit I'll watch YouTube I'll listen to meditation I'll listen to a book on tape I chat with my kids or husband I you know listen to whatever music and I leave it on for a good you know few minutes three to five minutes or so then 
I will take a microfiber cloth like this and I have a bunch of these that have gone through many, many washes. You see some remnants of <laughs> makeup here even though I've washed these a thousand times. Like that stuff probably won't come out. That waterproof mascara, y'all. Anyway, I will take this and very gently and slowly remove the cleansing balm from my face and that gets most of my makeup off, most, but there's still residue. So the final step of my cleansing routine before I go into my nighttime skin routine, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second, is micellar water. There's a lot of disagreement about this. Some people think this stuff is junk. Some people feel that you should absolutely wash your face with water and soap before you put on any other skincare. I've been doing this for years now, this three-step thing where I do the eye makeup remover, the cleansing balm, and then go in with the micellar water. And I use the same one. I'll go to like a clean corner, just kind of pour it on there. And again, very slowly in circular motions, go all around my face to make sure every last little bit of makeup is gone gone. That's it. I don't put water and soap on my face at night. You can if you want to. Some people would say I'm crazy just for using this, but like I said, I've been using it for years and my face feels very clean thereafter. I know that the micellar water is supposed to leave a little film. I don't even notice that. Then my nighttime skincare routine. I'm all about that glazed donut effect for the, <laughs> for the nighttime. All about it. So I repeat that three-step routine from the morning. Right now, for my essence, and maybe some people would think this isn't your traditional watery essence and it's not. I'm using the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. How's that for a long name? From CosRx. It has a fairly thick texture, as you can see. I like to put a good, I don't know, maybe nickel size, not dime, not quarter, maybe nickel, because a little goes a long way with this. And I will put it all over my face. If nothing else, if it's doing nothing, it's definitely soothing and comfortable on the, <laughs> on the face. So this goes under my eyes, you know, into my eyeshadow area, all up to the hairline underneath. I even put it on my neck. I don't know what this is doing, but I like the way it feels and I'm gonna keep using it. <laughs> and when I'm done with this, I'll try a different essence for the evening. I like to rotate through different kinds of products to see what I like, but I do like this. Then a product that I am swearing by recently that I was really resistant to purchasing because it's pricey and I'm like, it can't be all that good but it is for me. And I can't believe I've waited this long to get it. And it's from Sunday Riley, Good Jeans. This is an all-in-one lactic acid treatment. Deeply exfoliates the dull surface of the skin, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I put this on after the essence has settled in a bit. I also use about a nickel size worth of this, not a dime, not a quarter, somewhere in between. And again, I work this into my entire face. It's gentle enough to use under my eyes. Some serums are very irritating under the eyes. I've not had that problem with this one. And this, if no other product I talk about has made a big difference, this one has. I mean, I really feel like this one is a fantastic exfoliator. I see a difference between this exfoliator and other exfoliators that I use. It's so gentle, but so effective and leaving you with a clean surface. This one plumps up my face, makes it just, I feel more youthful when I wake up in the morning when I use this. I feel like my skin overall, all, overall looks brighter, more radiant, more healthy in the morning. So whatever this is doing is working. And then after that, I go in with a very heavy moisturizer, a moisturizer that is very emollient and in some cases also occlusive. Emollient I take to mean incredibly thick and creamy and occlusive I take to mean almost serving as a barrier. Like think about petroleum jelly, Vaseline is an occlusive substance. When you put it on, there's not much that's hitting your skin. It acts as a barrier between your skin and the world. Whereas emollient, I usually take to mean a really thick substance. So I rotate through my moisturizers. The one that I'm using right now, and I don't know if this is even sold anymore because I got this at Target as well. Not Target, excuse me, at Marshalls. This is from Halika Halika and it's the Black Snail Repair Cream has black snail mucin firming and rejuvenating. <laughs> but it's a pretty, a pre oh, I love the way this smells, really nice and fresh. A pretty thick um, moisturizer. I've used as inexpensive as CeraVe 
and I have some pretty expensive ones, including like the Tatcha Overnight Repair Cream and those kinds of things sitting in that linen closet waiting to be used when this is done. So I rotate through those as well because I like to experience different kinds to see what I like. The Dewy Skin Cream from Tatcha is great. So is so are a bunch of drugstore options. So you don't you know have to go crazy spending a lot on your skincare products. I think it's more about the steps and the routine of the steps. And if nothing else, making sure you're cleansing, moisturizing, and using sunscreen. Those are like the three holy grail steps. All of this other stuff is extra and fun. There's debate about whether it works or not. I can tell you from my own experience that this good jeans has made a noticeable difference for me. Now, let me talk about a couple other things. I will absolutely moisturize my lips at night before I go to bed, and I'm talking heavy moisturization. So right now, the products I'm using are the Laneige Sleep Mask. I will put this on first. This is a little weird. I don't know why I came up with this, but it's working for me. <laughs> I don't know how I came up with it. Lip, lip mask, and then I go in with this Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask. It doesn't matter. There's drugstore options and less expensive options than these. In fact, there's a little tub from Strivectin. It's in a blue jar that I use too. It's over on my nightstand. I also have just regular old, you know, drugstore lip balm and I have Vaseline too. All of those things are great. The difference is like Vaseline is occlusive, so it doesn't necessarily sink into the lips and moisturize them. This can be a little bit occlusive as well, where I find this to actually sink in a bit more. So I do this, add that, and then do that again, like a sandwich. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> And it works and I love the way my lips feel in the morning and then in the morning I do after I get out of the shower as I'm doing my other skincare also add a little bit onto my lips to help moisturize before I do my makeup ain't nothing worse than looking all cute and you got crusty lips because you took care of all of your other skincare but you didn't moisturize your lips before you put your lip liner and lipstick or lip stain or whatever it is that you're doing on your liquid lipstick god forbid onto some crusty dusty lips we don't need that so i suffer from dry lips i can't tell you why but it's like the, my one a major problem area for me so I wanted to share those. And then finally, finally, this is a much longer video than I thought. So I hope that is okay. I had the crazy idea to actually do like a get ready with me after filming this portion and doing a full face of makeup. That ain't happening. This is super long. So I won't torture you all with a get ready with me. But I mentioned this as a new product in my routine in a previous video, maybe a couple of videos ago. And it looks really weird. <laughs> So hang on, it's the new face. And this is the Trinity, this is the big one. There's a new face mini. It's a microcurrent device, a microcurrent device. There are lots of different ones out on the market. I went with this one because this one had the best reviews. One of the YouTubers who's in the makeup arena that I actually do trust her recommendations because I know, I don't agree with all of them, but I trust that she's giving me her best opinion um, is Angie Hot and Flashy. Hi, it's Angie. And hot and flashy. She's so adorable. <laughs> I love that she's in our age group. She's a little older than me, but I really appreciate the thorough review that she does on all of her recommendations. And I really feel like she's bringing you what she thinks are her best performing products. So she's raved about this one. I disagree with her on some other things, but like the Dyson Airwrap, which I used for my hair. This is three day old hair y'all and it's still going strong and it's still got volume and I haven't even done much to it other than kind of run my fingers through it today. So anyway, you gotta try products for yourself friends and see what you think. So this is a, a pretty pricey product. It's not one that I would say run out and get unless you have a little bit of budget to invest in it. I got a hair in my eye, it's driving me crazy. Do y'all see it? Okay, Phew. <laughs> but you don't hear anything. You know why? Because there's nothing to hear. It's a microcurrent device. So there's a little bit, well, you'll hear it beep in a second. Hold on. But there's a little bit of electric current that's coming out of these nodes. And you hear that sound. So at the start of the sound, you place it in an area and you pass it over. And when the sound stops, you're done with the pass. And you do three passes over certain areas of your face. And then you move on to other areas. So the way that I use this, there's four sections. No, excuse me, six sections. I do like down here, three passes on both sides. I do three passes on both sides up here, like from the nose all the way back to almost the ear. And I do three passes, actually it's eight sections, three passes in here, because I also, I've turned this off, but I'll put it like right here, underneath my eye to get to the muscles here, and then also up here. 
So one, two, three, four times three passes. So it is a microcurrent device that sends out a little electrical pulse current type of thing. And the idea is that it penetrates through your skin to the muscle and helps the, it's almost like baby Botox for your muscles without getting injected. So in that sense, I don't know if you all can tell and tell me if y'all think I'm crazy. I feel like my fa facial expressions are much more relaxed and I can be very expressive and do lots of things with my face. But for the most part, it feels like, I, and I don't know what Botox feels like, but I imagine that this is like similar to that, except the very sort of baby version of it. I feel like my forehead is more relaxed. I feel like my overall countenance, countenance is more relaxed. And if I understand it correctly, it's a cumulative effect over time. If your muscles are doing less exaggerated contractions over time, then you're less susceptible to deep wrinkling in the long run, something like that. I think that's how this works. All I can tell you is that I feel like overall my skin elasticity, overall like expressions, all of that just seems a lot smoother and cleaner. I don't think it does a lot for the surface of your skin. So that's something to keep in mind. You do need an ultrasound gel with this. It comes with its own gel that has a hyaluronic acid, but honestly, I think it's overpriced and gimmicky, that part of it. This device is what's worth it. You don't even need, there's all these kind of crazy attachments that you can do with this. Well, I haven't used the attachment, so I can't speak to that. But right now I'm happy with this device. It stays on a charging base and it takes me maybe 10 minutes additional, sometimes 15 if I wanna do extra passes. In the mornings, I've been doing it every day from November to December to January. And I recently have cut back to three-ish times a week, three to four times a week, which is I think what you're supposed to be doing. So, and so I just ordered this ultrasound gel off of Amazon for like six or seven dollars. I have three or four backups of this, and this has lasted me for weeks and weeks. So if you're gonna do this, get your ultrasound gel somewhere else for a lot cheaper. But you need the ultrasound gel as a conductor for the microcurrent. You don't wanna use this on its own on your skin. One, it won't be effective, and two, it'll just sting, like zap sting the immediate area. That's not fun. I have done that. And you also want to be careful to keep this away from your hair because if it touches your hair, it's a little bit of a, a little tiny zap. So I'll usually put like a headband on and just keep my hair back. But I feel like this has made a big difference. I also want to share, <laughs> reluctantly, because I'm a little embarrassed that I'm using this product, the Omnilux face mask. So for those of you that watch my Sephora haul video or my like when I was talking about what do I want to get in the Sephora sale in the fall, <laughs> uh, that was one of the products that I was looking at. I don't think Sephora sells Omnilux. I think I was looking at like the Jarts LED mask at Sephora, but it's ridiculous. It's like almost, I don't know, $460, almost $500 or something like that on Sephora. The Omnilux isn't much better, and I only found a 10% discount, but it was part of my birthday gift to myself. Remember I got the Angelique Noir perfume uh, as a gift to myself, and then I also got the Omnilux. So those were for me. I just started using the Omnilux. I used it twice so far, so I cannot talk about any differences that it has made, but I will keep you posted. So my friends, that is what's happening. I will also say for those of you that watch me on the other channel, if you've ever commented that I, it looks like I have great skin, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. In addition to these products, foundation. I use some really fabulous foundations. I've done trial and error to figure out what works best for me. And a lot of what you're seeing is a ton of foundation. Look, that's just the truth. And you're seeing my skin tone and problems and whatever be washed out by ring lights. So that's the case. And I'm going to share something with you. Be just kind of alert when you're looking at other people's videos. Even people in our little space here, like this space and also in the fragrance space if you're over there too. People use filters. I have not used filters on my videos. What I may do is I may adjust the color a little bit. Like if I'm looking particularly, let's say gray tone because of the way the lighting is, I might adjust the colors a little bit on the video to bring me back to what I think was my natural look for that day. And I'll also sometimes put, uh, it's called the vignette mode where around the corners of the screen, in fact, I'll do it here for you temporarily so you see what I'm saying. It kind of darkens the outer part of the screen and it's just like for a little bit of like dramatic effect. 
and sometimes to focus people in on the face. But I do not like blur out my skin on videos. I refuse to do that. I will on Instagram use some filters for fun effect on my face, right? But it's, the assumption is, you know, I'm using a filter. Like it's really clear. I'm not trying to fool people into thinking that's what I look like. Like when I have, you know, weird long lashes or there's, you know, sparkles on my face. Hello. Like we all know that those are filters, right? And it's just for, for fun on Instagram. But there's an understanding that there's a filter being used there for dramatic effect and fun, not to have people think that that's what I actually look like. Anyway, in these videos and in my um, fragrance videos, on occasion, I will adjust the coloring on my skin to give you a more realistic look at what I actually look like that day. That's all. So just be aware, sometimes people use filters if you think they have great skin or you're looking at a face full of foundation and powder. Nothing wrong with that. I mean... <laughs> We go through a lot of trouble to put on makeup to look good when we film. We want to look nice for you all. So, but this is me. This is me. Oh, let me show you. Oh, I have some stuff on my, my robe. Maybe that you don't want to see, like some product that <laughs> dropped out. But let me show you the mirror that I'm working with. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to leave all of my products in front of it that I've showed you. But I have a new mirror to get ready with for makeup. Admittedly, it's not as bright as the... I think it was like a Clairol. Was it a Cl no? Is that a, is that a brand? I forget the the makeup mirror that I had before, but it was smaller, and I had to like jerry rig it and put it up on books and a footstool and all of that on top of the. It just got to be too much. So this one is large. It's not as bright, but it does still give me some decent light, as you can see. It's over here. Uh, so anyway, let me show you what that looks like. So here it is. Isn't this amazing? I got that off of Amazon. This is my little tripod that the phone was sitting on to film this video and um let me see what i can show you about this if y'all are interested you know what i'll just go ahead and link this thing in the description box if i remember where to find the link but it can totally look at that go down to like nighttime lighting and you use one finger to pop it back up and then you can change the mood so like here's like a more blue light kind of mood and that's a more yellowy kind of mood and then back to the mode that I would use. So I'm loving this thing. I forgot to insert, it, this is not part of skincare, but it is part of my nighttime routine and it's any kind of lash serum. So this is the Grande Lash. I've used like three or four other kinds, names that I can't remember right now. It doesn't really matter, but a, a lash serum. I'm pretty brutal on my eyelashes in terms of like mascara. And then with all that cleansing and stuff, stuff naturally starts to fall out because you're like constantly, you know, doing these motions. So anyway, this has been an important part of the routine. Sorry, I forgot that. Not skin related, but adjacent. I'm all over the place. I totally forgot to talk about the role of protein and fat. Again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. And if you are, you can feel free to, I'm applying some stuff to my lips now because they're getting dry. Feel free to disagree with me. I have noticed... A big difference in my overall skin tone, texture, elasticity, all of those things since I have dramatically upped my protein intake. So I can't tell you exactly what that means, but I try to make sure that I have good protein at every meal. And it includes protein that has fat in it because I think all of that kind of forms the building blocks of your skin. So I'm talking about a cut of pork chop, a cut of ribeye and chicken, whatever it is, I have the protein and I have healthy fats along with it. At almost every meal, I'm not as good with that as I'd like to be and as consistent as I would like to be. But I do notice that when I don't have my protein intake, my skin gets drier and it starts to sag more and it doesn't have as much shape and so forth as it does when I'm eating protein and healthy fats on a consistent basis. And I've also noticed a difference in my skin, nails, and hair since I have been using a collagen protein powder. And so I've used two different kinds. The one that I'm using right now is called Vital Proteins, and it's here. And I've used one called, I think it's Code Age. I've been using that probably five-ish years and have noticed a dramatic difference in the strength of my nails. My hair grows out pretty fast. Like you can even see, you see these little grays and stuff here. So I went through a period in my late 30s, early 40s, where my hair actually started to thin out. And I got a little worried and then realized through my own research or started to experiment rather, realizing that protein and fat play a huge role as building blocks and all of that. And so I changed that 
and I am back to having to make sure that I'm cutting my hair pretty regularly because this is this is probably like I don't know six weeks of growth it's almost two inches out at this point so anyway this hair grow, grows fast and it stays pretty strong I mean I do color it and then heat treated and stuff and so you know it goes through all of that sort of trauma from hairstyling and whatever but I think overall my hair is fairly healthy to be almost 50 years old and uh the same thing with overall skin and nails so hope that's helpful that's it that's what I have for you all today that was kind of rambly but that's what I do that's my morning routine and my nighttime routine minus the makeup in between hope you enjoyed would love to hear your thoughts on these products if you've used them and whatever your other favorite skincare products are. Don't be stingy. Share with our friends down below so that people can see what you're using that's effective, particularly your age group and your skin type. Don't forget that because that's important to note. Love you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me for this video. See you in the next one. Take care.